Welcome. Welcome, my friends. Welcome to January 31st, last day of the month. Last day of the month. The days are getting longer. So that's a great, great, great blessing. You know, October, November is such a hard months just because the days are short. It gets dark early. It feels like it's midnight at four o'clock. But now, you know, in January, the sun sets later, every, a minute later every single day, all the way through, I think, July, end of July, August. So it's beautiful. And the promise of a new day is today. The promise of a new day is today. And we're just so grateful for it. So welcome today. Welcome this morning. Father, we welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, come help us teach us instruct us show us in the way that we should go lord jesus let your kingdom reign in our hearts in our homes in our businesses wherever it is that we are let your kingdom reign so good morning everyone um today i want to give a special shout out to my friend, my sister, a beautiful person, Tiffany McCrum. Happy birthday, girl. Happy birthday. Blessings to you on your special day. I hope you have a beautiful wintry day at home with your little girl and our little friend, Mr. McCrum. So blessings to you. Blessings to you, Tiffers. We know we love you and we just pray God's richest blessing on you. You're, you're such a, a treasure from heaven. And for those that don't know Tiffany, um, she, uh, she's family to us uh, in our ministry and she just has the heart of God. So we just pr pray blessing over her today. <clears throat> I also wanna pray blessing over my, my friend, my sister and fellow um, songwriter, <clears throat> Excuse me, Ms. Ronnie Kent. Yesterday was her birthday, and I'm so excited for her. She is, um, she's an artist manager. She develops artists, um, but she is she is back in the game, and she is releasing her own music now. So we're just excited to see what God is doing in the lives of His people. Okay, so today we are talking about Psalm 43. Now, this is a really short, really short psalm, but even though it doesn't have too many verses, there's always things that we can pull from it. Usually when I read some of these, I'm like, Lord, well, what is it that you want to say? What is it that you want to teach? And I believe he gave me something today, so let's dive in. <clears throat> now, this psalm, Psalm 43, um, it doesn't have a title. It wasn't attributed to anyone. Um, we don't know who wrote it, but it was definitely a psalmist. And um, it was a prayer that was recorded. It was a prayer of deliverance. <clears throat> so verse one, it says, vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked and so in another translation the, the psalmist is saying father lord <clears throat> declare me innocent he's saying defend me against ungodly people rescue me from liars i mean david had this struggle and now whoever wrote this psalm is praying this too, praying this prayer too. He's saying, God, declare me innocent and defend me against ungodly people. Rescue me from those who are liars. Um, and it's refreshing to see how psalmists um, used, wrote these prayers down, how they, how they gave life to the struggles that they were having. They, they made it public. You know, they were facing these difficulties. Good morning, Vicki. Good morning. I, girl, I'm thankful for your faithfulness. <laughs> you come here and you show up when you have a busy morning. So thank you for that. Um, we are talking about 
Psalm 43, Vicki. It's a really short psalm, but you know me. I'll just, you know, just keep on babbling. But there, <laughs> let's see how, how quickly I can, I can get through this. Um, but so the psalmist, the psalmist, they made these public prayers so that people could hear it. Um, and, you know, they had conflicts with people and they had issues. And so they would write out these prayers so that they had something um, that they can cry out to God for. And so, you know, they gave they gave voice to their struggles. They gave voice to their struggles. They uh, they they didn't keep these struggles within. They didn't harbor, you know, these feelings of uncertainty and fear and doubt and questions that they had about God. They didn't they didn't keep that within. They they made those things public. And that's why I'm so thankful that we have these prayers. But here they were dealing with um, people that were lying against this person, against the psalmist. And, you know, probably people were ganging up on this psalmist. And, and so here they were crying out to God. They were like, Father, defend me. Defend me against liars. Rescue me from ungodly people, ungodly liars. And we know when we're in a situation, the Lord is the only one that, who, that can defend us. The Lord is the only one that can defend us. And, and so, you know, in life, we have people that come against us constantly, constantly. And that's what the, the psalmist prayed. They prayed to the Father for, for, for help. And so in our lives, in our lives, yes, we have people that come against us. But I wanted to look at this from the angle of our biggest enemy, our biggest enemy enemy that comes against us constantly where we need the Lord to defend us and that's the enemy of our soul that's the enemy of our soul Satan you know he is the one that he's not lying he's not using people to lie against us maybe for some people that might be the case um he's not using people to lie against us he's using he's planting seeds of doubt and uncertainty and of fear in our own minds, lying to us so that we can fall for lies. The enemy of our soul, he plants lies into our mind to cause us to think contrary to the word of the Lord, to think contrary to the purposes of God for our lives. And so he, that is a challenge that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, not just believers, everyone, right? Because the enemy, he is the father of lies. And, and the Bible declares and says that there is no truth in him. And because there is no truth, he lives in a realm of lying. And if he can constantly lie to people and cause them to believe things that are not true, then he's won. He's won. You know, and so we, but we, as those who know the Lord and know the truth, we have to constantly walk a fine line of, of saying, you know, I don't receive that. I don't receive that thought. I don't take that thought in. I cancel that thought. You know, sometimes we'll face a challenge. And the first thing that comes to our mind is, I, I can't do that. You know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't have enough education. I didn't go to school for that nobody taught me that i've never experienced that you know we start to think on these things that are lies and it's like it is like uh pilar vega thank you for joining i'm gonna tell you a little secret pilar you know that my my middle name is pilar <laughs> maria del pilar um so god bless you god bless you for joining um so we we have these thoughts that are constantly coming into our mind to to try to you know stifle the the purposes and the plans of god the the thoughts that come in thank you sis thank you so much um these thoughts that come in to make us feel like we can't do certain things or we 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 don't deserve certain things 
you know, so many lies come our way. And it's like we constantly have to have a shield up in our mind. You know, you have a shield, you have to put up a shield not to accept that because if it gets into your mind and you think about it a little bit too long, it's going to seep into the heart. And if it gets into the heart, it's a done deal. It's you've, you've been, you've been brought into the lie. And so Satan, Satan loves to lie to us. You know, he, he plants ideas into us to make us think a certain way. And it's like, no, no, we have to know the truth of the word. We have to know what God has said and let that into our heart. Let that seep in um, because we can't accept those lies. We cannot accept the lie of the enemy. We cannot accept that there's things that, that he will try to use to cause us to walk a different way. You know, if, if you're going into a business deal and if you go in thinking like, you know, I, you know, I don't know, you know, these people are bigger than me or have more, more than I do. And, you know, you start thinking those ideas and then that's it. That's it. We've, we've derailed, we've derailed our success. And so we have to we have to learn to accept God's truth over our life over our lives. You know, as a vocal coach, <clears throat> I've worked with singers for many years. And many of them tell me the same thing. And it's so unique that God always sends me the same type of people. And I understand because I I went through the same thing too when I was younger. Um, and when I was first starting out, but the Lord helped me to stand firm and stand strong. But a lot of the, the singers that I've worked with over the years, they always say the same thing. They're like, I don't sound good. I don't like the way I sound. I wish I sounded better. You know, they, 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 um, they put themselves down. You know, they, they speak these things that are not true. You know, I mean, these are like talented people, talented singers with beautiful, incredible voices with no confidence, no confidence in the gift that God has given them. And so it's a dilemma. <clears throat> it's a dilemma because my biggest challenge in working with them is not to make them sound better because they already sound good you know i might teach them a couple of techniques to you know do a little more with their range or whatever but i could tell you i could tell you over and over i could say to them you know what you sound amazing you sound incredible you know part of it is for me to affirm them and let them know yeah you sound incredible you sound great and um go for it go for it you are meant to sing but i could tell them that over and over and over and unless they start to believe it in themselves my words are not going to convince them you know it's it's not going to convince them where does those lie where do those lies come from where do they come from they come from from hell the pit of hell because satan would not want them to sing if per if their purpose in life is to sing um and if he can say to them oh you know you don't sound like that girl or you don't sound like that person or or you don't look like that person you know that right there that right there that has defeated defeated them in battle and so and i'm just referring to singers because that is you know what i work with um and i've worked with over time and i've seen it over and over but all of us we are all affected by lies that the enemy tries to tell us and so <clears throat> and we just have to remember we just have to remember what the word of god says about satan right satan goes before god to accuse us he is the accuser of the brethren that's what the bible says he he accuses us before god and god does not look at us the way satan does god is a loving father he's a loving father he doesn't look at us that way and so um good morning good morning nana blessings to you we are talking about psalms 43 psalms 43 and we're talking about the lies that the enemy plants in our way 
to um, to derail us and to cause us not to fulfill our destiny in God. He is a liar and the father of lies. Yes, he is, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Yes, he is. In Romans 8:33, it says, <clears throat> it says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Paul, for writing that. He says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It's like God is not, he ain't taking that. He is not taking that. He is not taking these charges against us. When his son did all the work already to wash us and make us clean, make us whole, give us spotless, uh, we are a spotless bride before the lamb. Yes, we are. And so he's saying, Paul is saying, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who? The devil? Like, he has no power in his words. <clears throat> but I love what Revelation 12.10 also says. And it says about the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan. It says, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. So he's saying now the salvation, the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of Christ have come. This is what's going to happen in heaven. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them before God day and night. First of all, two things are happening here. Three things are happening here. The kingdom of God has come. When we all stand before God on judgment day, you know, the kingdom of God has come. The salvation, the power, and the kingdom. Ooh, that's going to be a great, 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 great day. That is going to be a great day. Marilyn says, God loves us so that he gave us power and authority over the enemy. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And so three things are happening in Revelation 12, 10. The kingdom of God has come. Salvation has come. Power has come, right? And the accuser of the brethren, Satan, has been thrown at down. He is, he is taking off his high horse, y'all. He is taken off of his high horse. But look at what it says. He who accuses, he accuses the brethren day and night. I don't understand. Like, how, why is he not giving up? Why is he not giving up? Like he knows he's not going to win, but he, it's like he's like a pesty little child that just doesn't stop. Like, hey, look at what they're doing. Look at what Maria is doing. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't know how God tolerates him. I couldn't. You know, like when your kid annoys you and just like, mira, vete pa'l cuarto. You know, like go into your room, you know? God is patient, I tell you. Our father is patient because he, um, I don't know how he tolerates this constant nagging and accusation. And so going back to Romans 8.33, who, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? We are God's elect. We are the ones he has chosen. And the enemy is going to come up in here, up in God's face, and accuse us constantly when Jesus is like, I already covered that. That sin is covered. That weakness is covered. That failure is covered. Now we have to walk in, you know, we have to walk in confession and we have to confess our sins before God, you know, so that those sins don't stick on us, you know, because when we don't confess our sin, that sin sticks on you, you know. Um, Marilyn says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Right. I mean, we just have to remember that. Yes. Who can be against us? Satan can't be against us because God is for us. He is for us today, every day, 
and forevermore. So how do you fight a lie? How do you fight a lie? You fight a lie with truth. You fight a lie with truth. And yesterday, my Lord, um, in service, Pastor Charles was teaching from Daniel 8. And it was, it was, oof, it was good. It was very, very good. And he was talking about, in verse 25, about the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, he was saying in, in Daniel 8.25, is saying that he's going to try to take on the prince of princes, prince, not princesses, princes, the prince of princes, which is Christ. The Antichrist got the nerve. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for that. The Antichrist has the nerve to take on Jesus. He is the prince of princes. He is going to try to take him on. And what Pastor Charles um, was saying was that, you know, of course, Jesus is the prince of all princes, but the, the Antichrist is going to come. And it, in verse 28, it says that he's going to try to take on Jesus, but the word says he will be broken and not by human power, not by human power. In other words, the Antichrist, who is powered by the, excuse me, by the enemy, would be defeated not by human strategies, not by, Pastor Charles says, not by a gun, not by, you know, whatever. Um, but the revelation that God gave Pastor Charles of how the enemy would be defeated was powerful. He said he would be defeated through truth and love. Because those are the weapons that Jesus comes armed with. Truth, and, and he talked about in John, I think it was John 14, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? And so the enemy is going to be um, defeated through truth and love. And I loved the example that Pastor Charles said. Oh my gosh, that thing just Oof, made it so very clear for all of us. He said that when Satan comes face to face, when he confronts Jesus face to face, when he sees Jesus' eyes on that day when he is to be judged, he will be put to shame. Satan is going to have to bow down before Jesus, not only because Jesus is Lord, but because of the shame because Jesus is full of truth, which Satan is not, and full of love. And, and he was saying not that he loves Satan, but because Jesus is so full of truth and love, and that, that would put Satan to shame. And I thought that was mind boggling. That was a beautiful picture of how the enemy is going to bow before the Lord on that day, on that day. And so, and Paul, the apostle, understood this as well. He said, he said in Romans 12, 21, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil with good by doing good. That's, that's our charge. That's our charge, that we conquer evil, not by doing evil, but we conquer evil by doing what is good. And so, you know, Pastor Charles was saying yesterday, the next time that we're filled with fear or anxiety or worry or anything that is contrary to God's kingdom, because, you know, we live, we're not of this world, so we live according to God's kingdom, according to God's rules and, and regulations, his kingdom is different from this world. So if we're, we're um, tempted to feel worried or anxious or anything, the next time that we are going through something, he said, just say Jesus. Just say the name Jesus. Because those things that are trying to bring that on you, you know, that fear, that anxiousness, that worry, that anxiety, those things that are trying to bring that on you, it has to flee at the mention of the name, at the mention of the name. Okay, 
I have to wrap this up. I have to wrap it up. Verse two. Let me just let me read this and wrap it up. Verse two. And on you are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? So again, you know, sometimes we get like this. This is what the psalmist is saying. You are my God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? And it's like, again, that's a lie of the enemy. The, the enemy plants that lie in our heart that when we're in a situation, we feel like God has rejected us and abandoned us. And it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. And we can't, we can't accept that. We have to remember that when we are going through something, God hasn't rejected us. God has not abandoned us. God has not left us. He's not forsaken us. So we don't accept the lie, okay? We don't accept the lie. The word says he, he is an ever present help. I believe that was from Psalm 46. He, was an, he is an ever present help in times of trouble, in times of trouble. I'm gonna tell you this quick, quick story in the next minute or so. On Saturday, we had a winter storm up here in, in the Northeast, in Jersey, and you know it was it was really bad. And I had to take my daughter. My daughter had to go to work, and I was like, you know, she is not she is not savvy enough to drive in a winter storm. Um, it was supposed to be a blizzard. They said whiteout conditions, blah blah blah, and she had to go in. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take you to work. I, I will take you to work. And so, and it's like a half hour drive. And the minute I was walking to my car, um, it was like I looked at the, the front of my car and I heard this in my spirit. Listen to this. I heard this in my spirit. It was like, you're going to get into an accident. And I was like, I bind the devil. Well, I said, I bind that lie in the name of Jesus, right? And so as I was, you know, we got in the car, we just prayed and I said, I plead the blood of Jesus, no accidents that will get you there safely and come back. So we're driving whatever on the road. Um, the highway was pretty clean till we got to this one part and it had not been cleaned. It was a, a mess. It was snow and slush and everything. And for some reason, cars just don't do well anymore in the snow. I don't know what it is, but they just don't do well in the snow anymore. And I won't go into all the details, but there were two cars in front of me that were going very, very slow. And we were at this place where some, some of them go this way to get off the highway and some go straight. And I was like, do I go this way or do I go straight? I had to make a momentary decision. And I was forced to make the decision because the car in front of me was trying to not go off the highway, you know, get off the exit. And it started to back up and try to go back into the highway. And I was like, what is this person doing? And then at the same time, I could see a car on my rear view mirror that was flying, driving like 70 miles an hour on this slushy road. And so long story short, so much happened within a second, within a second, it was like, a car was in front of us going very slow that one car was trying to not get off the highway and get right back into the highway i was like i saw this car in my rearview mirror and i was just like i was i had enough room to make a decision you know slow down even more i was basically driving like less than 10 miles an hour and i was trying to get off i said you know what let me just go that way and this car, it was a Porsche, beautiful, gorgeous Porsche flying down the highway like it's a regular, normal, sunny day. Um, saw that what was happening and slammed their brakes and that car just spinned out of control. It just spinned out of control. It was like going here, there, everywhere, spinning. I was like, Lord Jesus, oh my gosh. And I felt like I was just frozen in time. I just I just stood there. I was trying to move little by little and I just saw it all happen. And thankfully nothing, nothing happened. Nothing. Like the car just spin and it almost hit the divider and all of that. Um at the end of the that whole thing, it like it spinned in such a way that it was facing the way it came. 
but nothing happened and it was it was it was scary to drive that day it was very scary the roads were not good but you know it just shows the blessing of the lord you know when you pray and you ask god god spares you god puts his angels in places that car could have hit me because it was flying like in the left lane i was probably in the right lane but the way it was turning anything could have happened but but god saved us and protected us and i took her to work and i got back home because the lord was with us the lord was with us so you know how the enemy just was would like to lie to us and say you're gonna get into accident no we bind that lie thank you thank you for exposing that because now i have to pray more right <laughs> now i can just declare you just reminded me i need to pray and plead the blood of jesus and and that's what that's what we have to do is when the enemy lies to us thank you for letting me know your plans because i will now bring on my team <laughs> the angels of the lord to come join me in this little adventure um so that's how we have to look at it okay verse three <laughs> send me your light and your faithful care oh yes um let them lead me yes and that's what happened on saturday the lord sent me his light and his faithful care that's what led us safely to my daughter's job and me back home let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. All right. Yes. That is it, verse five. Verse five, five verses, but I talked about it for sh surely a long time. <laughs> but we just thank God for his word. His word just fills us with faith, joy, hope, love. That's what it does. And so I thank you for sitting here with me, listening, and I pray that your faith is stirred, that you would remember that the enemy, <clears throat> he is defeated, that whatever accusations he has, he gives to you, that you would reject them in Jesus' name, okay? So listen, this week I have Steve Mitchell coming up. He is gonna, he is a, a, a worship pastor, an incredible psalmist, and he is gonna be teaching us from Psalm 45 on Wednesday. So I want you guys to tune in for that. Good morning, Doug, good morning. And, you know, if this encourages you, share this with someone that might need encouragement. You know, we believe that God gives us his word to strengthen us, and that's how we strengthen one another. So if, if this message today encouraged you, share it with someone, all right? And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Blessings to you. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Bilal. Thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and be gracious to you. And the Lord give you his shalom, his shalom. So we just thank you. Have a blessed day. Ciao, ciao.